for a good joke. Uh, does that happen every time Jeff goes live? <laughs> Shut. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought another beer too, nice. just in case. But nice. looks, I, I totally forgot about the cocktails. YouTube, what are you doing? Are you going to start? There it goes. There it's it thinking goes. about it. It's doing something. What the heck? Switch panels. For some reason, my thing is red. I'm only able to send up like three megabits, so it's not happy at the moment. So this is just blur. Yeah. Well, Ooh. we're not even live yet. Oh. Oh, I, there we're there I, we're I, live. I thought I saw I thought I saw a notification said we were live. 14 seconds ago. AMD flaw is fake. Yes, I know AMD flaw is fake, but there's some people who don't know that, and I've got to advertise it. How else would I get you all to watch? Welcome to Talking Heads. Hey. Episode 22. Uh, how's the stream looking? My computer is saying we're not doing uh, so well. It, it looks good on my phone. Buffer, buffer, buffer. Buffer. Yeah. Now I'm buffering. I may have to, let me let me see if I can adjust the, uh, the upload here. My internet's been kind of sketchy for most of the day. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of things. Bear with me. I was kind of hoping this would work, but, oh. Okay. See, I told you, you weren't prepared. I'm oh. not late, you weren't prepared. Buffer, buffer. <laughs> okay, now we're green and yellow. Now we're thinking about it. A little bit better, a little bit better. Maybe. Back to red. Yeah, it might be better as a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Using a Chinese red? motherboard, I see. Oh, great, my, all my fans are here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks better. That looks better. We may not be in crisp 60 FPS on the upload. I, I should have a 10 megabit upload here for some reason. Uh, I'm only getting about two to two and a half. In fact, we may have to false start this <clears> and uh, <throat> re go back to a 30 frame or maybe a 24 even for tonight. I think I'm gonna do that just so we don't look like crap all night. <laughs> so, uh, tell you what. Episode 23, 23 coming, coming your way. <laughs> Streaming is offline. Okay, we're thinking about it. We got an image already. It's not gonna be the best quality stream, but it should be a stream. Just thinking about it. There, we're live. It's gonna be like the Willamette. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows that joke. Oh, <laughs> Steve, right? Yeah, Steve will get it. Yeah. All right, coming to you in a crisp, beautiful, clean 24 FPS now at two <laughs> megabit. Yeah. Hey, we're green across the board. That looks better. All right. Welcome to episode 23. <laughs> 22. 22.5. <laughs> yeah, something like that. 22 take two. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Let's get the intro out of the way. It's still buffering. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to... We're gonna set these aside for a minute. Let's do that. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we yeah. have we have something a little more important to get to. Yeah, we're we're doing something a little special this evening. Is this on? All right, I'm gonna reset it so I. So my parents just spent nine days in Maui, lucky. and uh, yeah, lucky. They didn't take me along, <laughs> but they did bring me back some booze. Yeah. <laughs> at least they know what the priority at, at is. At least they were yeah. thinking yeah. of me. So. <laughs> So uh, what this, does our son want? A new liver. Let's get him this. Right. So so they they went to this distillery and they make rum and they make vodka. And so my dad sent me a picture of the bottles and he goes, "You want some rum?" And I went, "I would love some Hawaiian rum because yeah. they only sell this at the distillery and or you can get it in bars there. They they, wow. don't, they don't sell it in stores. They don't do anything like that. So this is no cool. exporting. This is Kula. Uh, yeah. So they, they they don't export it to the the lower forty. The mainland. Mainland. They don't. Uh, you can only buy it at the distillery. So. I have not even opened this. We're gonna open it tonight. We're gonna to mix up a Mai Tai. Ooh. So. You know, that bottle kind of reminds me of uh, a bottle on Cork's Bar, DS9. Yeah, I was actually thinking that. Um, I've been looking for some custom glasses that we can use special on the show. And so I've been, uh, I've, I've, I'm actually watching a set of Romulan ale glasses right now. <laughs> the, the tall ones with the Empire yeah, logo yeah. on the front. Um, what else have I been looking at? There, there was one that was a replica of the bottles from uh, Voyager, the the weird rectangle bottles oh, yes, with the hand cut yes, out at the bottom. Yes, yes. Yeah. So. No, I, I was looking for a coffee cup 
uh, for my work, and that was want to get the Ractagino. Yeah. I want to get that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone said Jamaican rum is better than Hawaiian rum. I, I will absolutely agree with you there, although I've never had this before. Oh, that's a good smell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice, sweet. So, so we are making what I consider to be a Mai Tai. Um, when you go to Hawaii, what do you expect a Mai Tai to be, John? Rum, some kind of pineapple juice or sweet juice, you know, right. tropical. Right. Lime. Lime? Lime juice. Uh, I'm, I'm making what's known as a more traditional or a tiki style Mai Tai from back in the tiki Older, late, late okay. prohibition era. Th this is going to be an official Mai Tai with orgeat, homemade orgeat syrup. Ooh. Um, so I'm gonna just do a double order. So what this is, is basically we each get an ounce of dark rum, we each get an ounce of light rum. It's uh, three quarter ounce of lime juice and one ounce orgeat. You shake it, you pour it over crushed ice. Well, I thought that was the vodka you said. No, this is a light rum. Yeah, but when yeah. you said they did uh, they, vodka. They also got some vodka. They didn't buy me any vodka, oh. although I did try the vodka and that was delicious. Oh. There we go. My chat's not up. Yeah. Yep. Not reading chat right now, guys, because I'm uh, mixing us a cocktail. There we go. Ounce and a half. And then this is a uh, orgeat syrup. It is a uh, basically like a simple syrup, but it's made with almonds. Oh, so it's gonna have kind of a nutty flavor. Kind of a nutty flavor, uh, kind of similar to like an amaretto. Oh, okay, kinda, yeah. Kind of, but it's it's non-alcoholic. Discord. And, At least I can get on the Discord chat. And I apologize for the sound. There we Got go. A talking Heads channel. So that is what a traditional tiki mai tai should look like. Uh, see, that's a lot dirtier than yeah. what you'll see at bars. Yeah. When you go to Hawaii or a lot of bars or anything like that, and you ask for a mai tai, most people, you expect to get pineapple juice, orange juice, yeah. and, and a lot of rum. Yeah, and, and like a slice of pineapple and probably a minute cherry and an umbrella to distract exactly. you from everything. Exactly, so try that. Do me a favor and try that. Mm. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Way different than what. Ooh, you whatever. The, what was that? Uh, orgeat. Orgeat. That's, that yeah, gives an, it a nice it's uh, an, body. It's an almond syrup. It's a real good thick body to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but it and it's got that real deep smooth finish on. Yeah, the back that of it. mixed with the lime really yeah. bring gives it that tropical flavor yes. yeah. that you're like you said you get right. with pineapple and orange right. juice and other things that people try to <laughs> imitate. Right. And to be clear, this is not like candied alcohol like you like most people want in a Mai Tai. It's yeah. not it's not super sweet. It's a real thick drink with a real deep dark flavor to it. Yeah, it, it does remind me of like uh not a lemoncello but um sweet and sour. Now I'm not thinking you just said it earlier. My bad. Amaretto. Amaretto, yeah. yes. Uh, th this Body this wise. will taste a lot like an Amaretto sour. Although yes, that, that's kind of yeah. right. Uh, although that's made with uh with lemon juice typically. But uh, yeah, real similar palette to that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so traditional tiki mai tai. There we I, go. This is one of my favorite rum drinks. So, welcome to the show, everyone. We're <laughs> Twelve minutes late. We're Twelve minutes the... <laughs> late. Talking about cocktails. That's right. But hey, uh, where's the grass skirt? Where are the naked women? Gosh. Uh, you get. Where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> it is a little cold in here. I was nipping out earlier. <laughs> 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 yeah, it wasn't a good look earlier. So, all right, welcome to the show. <laughs> what do we got for beer news this week, Joe? Uh, there's a couple small things. Uh, there's yeah. one semi-large thing. It's not really craft news, but it is yeah, beer news. It's beer news. It it is, it's big news if you're it, if you're a domestic drinker. Yeah, we're, uh, Corona is releasing their first brand new beer in 29, 29 years. 29 years. Their third beer. Yep. Extra, extra light Corona. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, they are wasn't it already more mostly water light? Yeah, and... pretty much. I mean, it was basically pee. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, what is it? There's Corona, Corona Light, and now they're calling this Corona mm -hmm. Premium. Mm -hmm. And uh, what this is, it is just I think it's like 95 calories. I, ca or... I caught that, Rhett. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, yeah. Corona light is something like eighty calories. Eighty calories, and and so this is like fifteen calories less. Yeah. Um, the carbs. The big thing is is actually the carbs. Yeah. There, there's there's a lot less carbs in it, and they're saying they're trying to hit the demographic demographic of 35 and older men mm -hmm. who still want a beer but can't really work out a whole lot but right. they're wanting to still drink that flavor that they recognize right exactly um i don't know how well this is going to do uh corona actually has been buying up a couple of um uh, craft breweries recently right. um so but they're trying to dip their toe in, into that market too but uh, honestly i probably won't try it yeah uh, new extra clear piss flavor. Uh, Rhett wants to know how I scored Chad Kroger for the show. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's diet. LOL diet beer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, Corona. First brand new beer in 29 years. Yep. Uh, there's some there's some interesting beers that are coming out right now. Uh, it's, it's not super big news, but I just thought it was very interesting. So there's this brewery. Uh, actually, I forgot where they're, they're from. But, uh, the East Coast? Yeah, uh, Carolina. Carolina, something it? like that. So they're making rock-flavored beer, yep. <laughs> kind of. Um, they're essentially brewing a beer a very old, ancient way to where they're mm -hmm. superheating beers. Yeah. Uh, and then putting that into the boil and boiling the beer or the mash with mm -hmm. these super hot heated rocks. And so the beer s basically sits with these rocks mm -hmm. for about 90 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I think the rocks are like 600 degrees. What it's supposed to do is actually caramelize the malt mm -hmm. uh, differently and give it this really funky flavor, a lot smoother flavor. Kind of like, uh, oh God, what the, what's that drink name? Um, there was a middle-aged drink that was basically um, beer that they added a couple of spirits to, and then they quenched it with a uh, with a hot wrought iron. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm clog or crud. Or yeah, something like yeah. That. actually, actually, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a review on. I that. thought about doing one. Yeah, I, I was going to be. Well, they actually, there's a guy I found who makes a modern day version have of you, that. Have you seen the one with the raw egg? Yes, I've yeah. seen the one with the yeah. raw egg. So, but yeah, so I thought about buying that and, and doing a review on that. To totally invite me over. All right, I'd, I'd I'll, love to I'll try come that over one. that. Uh, I thought I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's weird. <laughs> Actually, Steve showed it to me. Nice. Um, uh, in fact, uh, How to Drink, I think, usually, or just did a video on that maybe oh. a month ago. And, uh, <laughs> so, I, yeah, I, I'd love to try that and, and do a review of it. Yeah, that. that'd be so, fun. That'd be good. Uh, I'm almost as warm as the local bar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, for other weird news, other beer, yeah. weird beer flavors, if you guys are big pastrami fans, I'm a huge pastrami fan. I'm, I'm a big deli guy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love a good, good thick cut pastrami. I like to love hot pastrami. Yeah. Someone is making pastrami flavored beer. Yep. To where, now they're not soaking the meat in, in the beer, <laughs> but they're actually taking uh, essentially the brine and the spices that you would cover the, the meat with. Right. The beef. And just let it soak in. So they're taking those spices and putting it into the beer. Right. This is the Schmaltz Brewing Company, and it's the Pastrami Pilsner. I'm a little <laughs> disappointed it's a Pilsner. Well, I think it's supposed to probably pair well with the sandwich, and usually a very light Pilsner like That's that true. That's would, true. would pair well, yeah. well with a big, salty, you know, spiced meat like that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess um, that's true. So, but yeah, a Pilsner, I mean, Pilsners are actually pretty complicated to do, and I would have done just an ale. Yeah. So yeah, just, I think an ale would have been better. Maybe even like a, a Scottish ale or something, something like, like that. that yeah. yeah. Um, Some local news that we do have. Uh, Jeff and I last year, one of the very first videos, I think, like third or fourth? Fourth video, I believe. Fourth video. Yeah. Uh, first video I was on. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic video. <laughs> it's a great video. Go, go check it out. <laughs> it's like the third or fourth time we've mentioned it. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the Oregon Brewers Festival. And the, the one we did was the 2007. So they just released the 2018 breweries that will be there, uh, the two cideries that will be there. Mm -hmm. Kind of a cool list. Uh, there's a couple new breweries that open up here in Oregon that will be there. And they talked about some, they didn't say by name, but the region that uh, a lot of the, um, you know, outside the Netherlands, the Baja, oh, nice. uh, Mexico, some brewers from those places will be there. Nice, because uh, I know a couple years ago they did a German theme one where they had like 10 or 12 German breweries yeah. there. 
Um, so yeah, it, it's nice to see getting the international craft beer crowd in. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know, the Oregon Brewers Fest is one of the largest uh, craft brew fests in the nation. I believe it's the largest outdoor brew fest. It's the largest outdoor brew fest. It's also the largest uh, West Coast yeah. brew fest. Yeah, it's, it's largest by a long shot on the yeah. West Coast. Uh, 70,000 people attend. Mm -hmm. They usually have 80 different breweries that, that are, are present there. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's a big deal. Um, like. Uh, Oregon's become known recently for being the craft brew capital of the world, and this is yeah. the, one of we, the largest brew fests, we, one of the best you can go to. Oh yeah, definitely. If if you want to try, I mean, they even sit there and say we only do two. We're only doing two ciders, and that's pushing it. Yeah. They want to push beer, <laughs> beer on people, yeah. uh, and usually most of the places, the breweries. They only allow them strictly to one beer. Where a lot of them, hey, can we enter multiple beers? Right. Um, a, a little sad though. This year they're they're cutting it one day short. Yeah. Um, yeah, Wednesday got cut. Didn't Wednesday it? got cut, yeah. so it's a Thursday through Saturday. Saturday, Saturday event, um, yeah. and the Buzz Tent uh, or Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday. Sunday. Okay, yeah. the uh, the the specialty tent will be cut uh, yeah. short. So yeah. uh, uh, the the specialty tent was used to be the best place to go because mm -hmm. they would have eighty breweries there, but then they'd also do eighty kegs, like little five gallon things mm -hmm. and uh, little little pony bottles. And and they they tap those and those were the the super rare made just for the for the brew fest or an experimental beer or something like that. They were a little bit more expensive, but uh, really good stuff. There. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it cost you probably about four to five dollars to try it, but yeah. it's stuff that you could never have before. Yeah. Um, you and, know, and, and when he says four to five dollars to try it, it's like four to five dollars for a two ounce pour. Yeah, but it's, it's <laughs> most of the time, totally, totally worth, worth it. it. Totally worth totally it. Totally worth it. Uh, and then we flip. Flip, thank you. Yes. Yeah, right. that's yeah, it's right. called a flip. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a beer with a couple of spirits added. Uh, sometimes they added some mead to it, and a lot of times they would drop in a raw egg, and then they'd heat up a uh, a, a piece of iron, and they'd drop it in it, and they'd flash boil the beer. Yeah. And uh, and and you drink it hot. It's a hot drink. It's it's uh, a drink that was meant for. I've been traveling for, you know. 16 hours and I just made it to the to the the bar or the meadery or whatever and I need something warm in my gut yeah uh something good with a lot of protein and a lot of in my yeah gut. and the rod is supposed to basically caramelize all the exactly. sugars and give you this sweet yeah. almost marshmallowy like flavor to it yep. um yeah. but flip thank you thank you for the word I, I knew it was it was a real quick word mm. and I, I was just drawing a blank on it yeah now the last thing that we have for beer news anyways yep. Is that uh, if you are an IPA drinker, we have a list of the 33 hottest IPAs that are out right now. Freaking ads. <laughs> right? <laughs> I thought, this, I thought this is an ad blocker. I, Didn't you I, even throw I, that? I, I did. There is an ad blocker. There's an ad blocker on the network. <laughs> this page still blocked 11 ads. <laughs> so uh, I believe there's actually like three Oregon breweries yeah. on here. Yeah. Uh, Block 15, Sticky Hands. And Melvin's, Melvin. Mel, well, Melvin's is not yeah. from here, but actually, I just did a review on that beer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I worked on one. That was a good video. Yeah, uh, the aroma. The one actually I was going to be released tomorrow with Steve uh, is actually really good. Portland in the house. Cheers, buddy. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's some, you know, uh, Piney the Elders on here still. Mm -hmm. um, I think even... Um, Oh, sticky hands. Yeah, sticky yeah. hands. Um, what is it? Oh gosh. Uh, I don't. Know. Portland, Maine, Illinois, Iowa, yeah. Minnesota. Against the grain, I've had that. Yeah. But yeah, so if if you yeah. are you know around this, so this is a national wide. Oh, Ex Novo. Ex Novo. Novo. Okay, yeah. Ex Novo. That one's delicious. Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah. Um. So and they're actually like two or uh, about a couple miles from my work. Uh, are, are we from Portland? We're actually in Salem. Yeah. The Northwest. We are broadcasting live from Salem, Oregon. So, uh, yeah, if, if you guys are around and you want to check out some, what are the considered the, the most sought after IPAs right now, check out this list. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Um, these are not the super, super rare. These are more the mass produced IPAs that are, you know, readily available right, right. right now. So th it's not a one off specialty. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Notion. Great Notion. I think Great, is yes. Name. Great Notion, I think, is also on here. Yeah. Um, I was going to throw up an article about them being, they actually got, received the fastest growing brewery in Portland this year. Mm -hmm. Nice. So. Nice. All right, some tech news. Tech news. Tech what news. What everyone here is for. Yep. Uh, so there were two 
big news stories that dropped in the last couple of days. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Back to the rock flavor. Yeah. <laughs> there, there have been like 15 or 20 comments. Tell us about the rock. <laughs> Why does it taste like rocks? <laughs> it's, they have a cool video of them brewing it. So oh, you nice. can actually see. You can go on the, the link that we have. And there's a video of them brewing it. And you see them with these huge, large bins full of just giant superheated rocks. And they just dump it. And you see the, the mash tun yeah. just start overflowing. It's cool. Nothing more sought after than the feeling of drinking a literal rock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there were two big tech uh, stories that broke really since like uh, Monday. 48 hours, really. Yeah, uh, well, the AMD one was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna start out with the NVIDIA one because that's the one I, I'm most familiar with. We'll get into my opinions on the AMD thing. Um, <laughs> laughable. Yeah, and and uh, it, everyone's going, the AMD thing is fake. I know the AMD yes. thing was, was Mostly a legitimate hoax, and, and I'll get into that later. But we're going to jump into uh, GPP, uh, the GeForce Partner Program, first and foremost. Um, actually, wait, I actually had... Uh, you had something else? I, I had uh, GPU demand is slowing down for crypto miners. Um, and uh, I, I referenced oh, yeah. this a couple weeks ago that I was starting to see prices drop on the used market, and I was starting to see... Um, bulk mining rigs available for sale. Yeah, I, I almost, when you posted this, I was like, mm -hmm. I thought we talked about this yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so I called this, and now other other organizations are starting to pick up on this, that, uh, um, uh, like, like I said, if you watch the used market, you can follow market trends a little bit easier, because uh, you can see when, when people are buying, when people are selling, what's the best thing to get. Um, but, uh, I started noticing on my local Craigslist and on eBay, people starting to sell bulk graphics cards. Hey, I have a mining rig with six RX 480s that I'm going to sell for four grand. Now that price is still way inflated, but the fact that he's willing to sell it for four grand means that he's not making four grand off mining anymore. Yeah. Uh, which means the demand and the, the saturation has reached a point where it's no longer financially making sense versus your electric bill versus your whatever else. Um... So there is a chance very soon we could start to see graphics card prices fall. Now they haven't fallen Yay. completely yet. <laughs> um, and there's a whole brand new batch of uh, new cards powerful yeah. cards possibly on the horizon, both from AMD and NVIDIA. Um, I know AMD or NVIDIA is rumored to be releasing their 2000 series or their 1100 series or whatever the hell they're gonna call it. Uh, Maybe at the end of this month or early April, I've, I've heard some, some speculation on, at least the announcement will happen like March 28th and then a release April 13th, which makes a lot of sense with some timelines that we've seen before from them. Um, but yeah, uh, I've, I've seen potential release of a 2080 and 2070 as soon as April 13th. Um, and as soon as those are on the market, that should relieve some of the market strain uh, for graphics cards. So. Fingers crossed, enthusiasts. We're we're hoping to, um, uh, hoping to see an end to this soon. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. We even talked about it, I think a couple of weeks ago of, of just you know during that whole bit mining crash. Uh huh. Uh, and then I think. Oh, and uh, Bitcoin fell below nine thousand dollars. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So when yeah when they when they fell below that, um, and then uh, I think you called it like the week after that. Uh huh. I think that's when you started seeing yep. this. Yep. How's it? What two months ago? Uh, maybe it's. Four or six weeks, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that long no. ago. Um, Go view some old talking heads. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you just want to boost your own numbers. Yes, I do. Because <laughs> Rhett took you down. Oh, my God. He took you down hard. Oh, whatever. <laughs> 1130. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was the first, though. First, Rhett. No. To get 1K. Well, you, you were first at 1K. I was first That's at right. 1K. Don't you forget it. Steve had one at 7 and another at 9, though. Yeah, so. everyone's close. You're yeah, but the thing is, okay, every time... Uh, <laughs> Every new talking head, it's like another thousand subscribers. Exactly. That's why. I am averaging 750 subscribers per week. Yeah. I gained 3,700 subscribers in the last 28 days. I was at 1,000 subscribers on December 12th. Yeah. To, to give you some context. And I'm at 8,500 tonight. Uh, I should pass 8,500 very shortly. Um, and in fact, I'm going to look at my <laughs> thing right now. Because I should have and passed then plus, it. The last time I was on, there was like nothing to talk about. Cause, yeah, because I, I should have passed the wall. Oh, we're so close. Oh. Arr. I am 61 views away from half a million views on YouTube. 61. I think I'm on like 
Two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those are your mom? <laughs> How many of those are me? F five. F five. F five. F five. If you're logged in, it doesn't count those views. <laughs> oh no, I, I create multiple accounts. Right, right. right. <laughs> anyway, uh, GPP news, GeForce Partner Program. Um, so this G one. Poop poop. Yeah, GPP. Um, this one came out. Uh, I think on Monday, Monday morning. Um, and this story was apparently shopped around by AMD because AMD is not happy about the the fallout from this. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, <laughs> NVIDIA has what they call their partner program, their GeForce partner program. And in the past, it's uh, allowed you to work a little bit closer with NVIDIA than just buying their chips and throwing them on boards and whatnot. It's gotten you access to their engineers. It's gotten you access to... Um, uh, uh, a little bit more early access on things. Um, they just revamped their partner program and they're including guaranteed early access, binned chips, um, uh, release day coverage, which is something that NVIDIA has never done. Uh, starting with the 10 series card, the Pascal cards back in May, May or uh, June, 2016, something like that. It's been almost two years now. Um, uh, NVIDIA started selling cards directly at retail. And so they, the Founders Edition cards, NVIDIA actually had those sourced, manufactured, and sold them as NVIDIA branded and no one else. And they've never really done that before. Um, and uh, John, you want to get us a couple glasses? We'll crack Yeah, them sure. Um, Hang on, let me, I, got, I want the bottom part. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Mm. All right. Oh, that's good. What, what do you want to open first? Um, well, I'll keep talking. I'll let you decide. Okay. Th these both look good, so whatever you want to go right. with. Um, NVIDIA has revamped their partner program to guarantee early access and to guarantee release day coverage. So NVIDIA will promote add-in board partners and, uh, and custom boards alongside their Founder Edition cards, which means you're more likely to get much better sales numbers um, and, and direct promotion from NVIDIA. Um, and if you don't sign up for the partner program, you don't get access to that. And everyone goes, well, it's, it's a choice and some people can choose not to do that. The problem is um, you don't get that access if you don't sign up. And you need that access if you want to be a, an official board partner and if you want to compete at, with the high-end uh, add-in board partners. Um, the other thing is, uh, so if you're on my Discord, uh, John had a bad pour, so I think that's a six to one payout. Shut up. <laughs> it was, it was to you that had a bad pour. I should have let you do it. Yeah, but I said John 50% head, 50% beer. It's that's, not, and not that's a third. Pushing. That's a that's third. Pushing that's a third. That's, that's, that's two fingers. That's two fingers. That's a half an inch over. So John, you're getting some love over on the chat. Yeah, everyone does love me. Glitter, Glitter beer. beer. What? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a follow up to that video too. So here's, here's where AMD has a problem with the, uh, with the add-in board or the GeForce partner program is uh, NVIDIA is requiring you to brand your NVIDIA cards with your gaming brand. So Aris, Gigabyte, uh, your uh, MSI Gaming X. Um, if you have a gaming brand, that gaming brand can only be used for NVIDIA chipsets. You cannot make an AMD chipset and, and sell their it card. And, 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 and use that same name. So what NVIDIA is doing is they are forcing you to do exclusive branding. Now, in the case of like Republic of Gaming or Oris or Gaming X, um, those are brands that have been established over the course of about a decade that are well-respected. You know they're good quality cards. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and those brands have spent a long time building that up. What NVIDIA is saying is if you sell an Oris GTX 1080, for example, you can't use the Oris brand on an AMD chip. You cannot sell a competitor's chip with your gaming brand. So NVIDIA is telling you what you can and cannot do with your own IP if you're a member of this program. Um, and uh, if it sounds anti-competitive, that's because it is. And if it sounds illegal, it's probably because it is. <laughs> um, oh, it's in their, it's in their guidelines. Right, they, they changed they are, it, so it's totally fine. They are flirting with so many really, really bad lines here. Yeah. Um, it, that, uh, well, it's not really that they're even said it. It's that they're not saying it. Right. It, it's that they're right. not saying, well, technically we're not saying it, but we are. Right. Ooh, wow. 
So if you like coconut, holy crap. This is mostly coconut. <laughs> I, I have some Malibu rum that doesn't have this much coconut. Yeah, this is this is actually almost a bit too much for me. The the smell is good. So someone just asked a really good question. Uh, why can't AMD ramp up stock for the RX 57580? Um, here's the problem, is when the current series of graphics cards, when the current generation was announced and built, which like I said, was mid 2016, crypto mining was a thing, but it wasn't a thing that people were involved with because there was no money in it. It was something you did for fun that, are you Instagramming right That's now? That's right, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, at least tag me in it. And that's the one thing I have more followers than you. Yeah, the one thing. <laughs> the one, the thing one thing I have over Joe. <laughs> um, the uh, so crypto mining back when these cards were produced, when they when they were originally released, um, it wasn't economically viable to spend a whole bunch of money mining and a whole bunch of money in electricity to get anything out of it. Um, Nowadays, you can actually make your money back or better, especially with the inflation that's going on with, uh, um, with, Graphic. with, with cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, the problem is we are so far late in the cycle. AMD is not going to ramp up production of an old chipset because then if all of a sudden this crashes, which we've seen how fast cryptocurrencies can crash. Um, Past month. All of a sudden they're left with a million and a half graphics cards on the shelf that they can't sell with a new chip ready to be released, that if they release that new chip, no one's gonna buy the old ones. Um, and same thing with Nvidia. If, if Nvidia goes, oh, you know what? We're gonna triple production on our GTX 1060 so we can get gamers cards in hands again. Um, the problem is we're six weeks, four weeks away from potential new GPU launches so on a new chip set. May, something like that? April. April? April. Okay. Um, we are so close to the new release that let's say they Nvidia decides, oh, you know what, instead of the 10,000 cards for GTX we produce in the month, and I'm just throwing out random numbers here, instead of the 10,000 cards we produce in the month of March, we're gonna upscale that to 60,000 cards. But then in April, we're gonna release the new chipsets um, and, uh, and those 10 series cards are not gonna sell, so all of a sudden we just blew $13 million on graphics cards that we can't sell. They're old and cheap, right, or, you know, that, basically. That are old and no one wants them yeah. anymore. It, it doesn't make We gotta sell them in cheap right. just to even make our money back. Right. It sucks for the consumer right now, but it doesn't make economic sense for NVIDIA or AMD to increase production this late in a product cycle. So that's why. Uh, I'm hoping we see some improvements in supply. Uh, everyone goes, oh, we should build some mining specific cards. The problem is they're gonna be the same chips. And if, Mining is still economically viable uh, six months from now. They're gonna buy all your graphics cards too, whether or not they make mining specific cards that are cheaper or not. It, it's still going to be economically viable for them to spend an extra $100 on a graphics card than it is to just buy a mining card. That's just pure economics. Um, so the only way that this can get better is if supply increases to a point that the miners are no longer buying them up, but how far do you have to increase supply to satiate the miners? Yeah. Because if they produce 100,000 more graphics cards, 100,000 cards are gonna go to mining again because it scales, it scales very well. Um, so yeah, it's complicated right now. Again, don't quote me on numbers. I'm, I was just spitballing those. Um, but anyway, if, if they scale up, they're just going to buy them up if it's still economically viable to mine. Yeah. No, I, I it. And it's a difficult thing because as a gamer, we rely on these things. Um, at the beginning of, or late last year, I had five 10 series graphics cards in my house. And today I have three. Um, and, and it's because I've, sold I've them? sold a couple, but, yeah. they, but the ones that I've sold, I, I swapped a GTX 1070 that I had. Uh, for the memory that's in my Threadripper chip, I swapped that straight across, which at the time, the 1070 wasn't that expensive, and uh, and memory was through the roof. And so I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm getting a great deal because I bought this card cheap and I got 32 <laughs> gigs of Dominator you Platinum, sucker. Screwed. Yeah, and all of a sudden the 1070 selling for a thousand, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my other zero? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, I only got $400 worth of RAM out of this. That sucks. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, that's why. Um, so did I cover GPP enough as, as far as why it's... I, I would say so. I, I would say so. I mean, uh, I, I don't um, think we're, we're at, we're not probably gonna break the record today. Right. Uh, Okay. Yeah, viewership's okay. Yeah. We're doing yeah, okay. Yeah. Although we peaked at 51 with Rhett. We're at 26 mm. now. Yeah, well, that, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's fine. So. This one, I, I actually really yeah. like the Raspberry Pi 3. The Model B Plus yes, model, is coming. Uh, model 3 B Plus uh, for the Raspberry Pi was announced today. Yeah. On Pi Day. Imagine that. Oh, well, right. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, very similar to the existing Raspberry Pi 3, which I own a couple of. Oh, uh, yeah, um, I own these two. And a uh, little bit new look to the pie. It's got so, the little stamped, what is that, heat sink? Uh, there's, uh, it's the same CPU. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's still the Broadcom Cortex-A53 quad core. 1.5. 1. 1.4 1. gigahertz up four. from 1.2. And yeah. the reason they could do that is they put an integrated heat spreader on Yeah. It. So no more needing to buy heat the fans, sinks to get yeah. decent overclocks. Yeah. It never really needed a fan. No, this, but well, there are but, heat sinks, but yeah. Right. So, some, the case with the, the cool down and, right. or something like exactly. that, that they're going to charge right. you an extra $10 to buy. Right. So there's, there's a couple cool improvements on here. Uh, the, the integrated heat spreader, you get an extra 200 megahertz on the base clock, which is really cool. Yep. Um, the, um, I'll get you the Wi-Fi in a second, because I think that's the most interesting thing. The Wi-Fi? Right? The Wi-Fi. I'll tell you why. I like the Ethernet. I know you like the Ethernet. I, like, I, like I think the, the Wi-Fi is more interesting. Okay. Okay. So they, uh, uh, as I understand it, the Ethernet used to pass through the US3 or the USB 2.0 bus, yes. but it was shared with other components. Now it's on its own bus. It's still connected via USB 2.0, but it's now a gigabit chipset. Yep. Um, you're still limited to the 480 megabit bandwidth uh, spec of USB 2.0. Um, and on the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, they were testing uh, throughput at 36 megabit on a 100 megabit connection, which is not terrible considering the hardware that's here. Yeah. Uh, with the gigabit chip, they're now getting 105 megabit per second. So significantly improved. Oh, yeah. um, and everyone's going, it's still not gigabit. You weren't going to get gigabit no. out of this chip anyway. Get, it does, give I mean, that up. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, I mean, it's a right. tiny little thing and right. you're, you're going at speeds it, that are super fast. And it's still $35. Yeah. Um, here's why, oh, and you can add power over ethernet through a first party uh, hat, oh. which is huge yeah. for things like digital signage, for a couple of things. I don't have to have a USB power adapter up behind my digital signage or digital displays, or if I wanted to do like a picture frame or I can just run an ethernet cable in and I'm done. Yep, and then that, so, all your cords and all your pictures, or yeah. it's one single cord, all good to go. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, for those of you saying RIP on for Stephen Hawking, yeah. Sucks that he passed away today. Uh, we do have a video tribute down below in the video description. I think it's the last one. Yeah, very last the one. very last one. Yep. Uh, which I changed the link later on to one that you might appreciate. Was it the Futurama? Nope, or? not the Futurama, and it's not the Simpsons. I was about to say, okay then. Yep, okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to Stephen Hawking in just a little bit. Um, the uh, the Wi-Fi is the most interesting thing on here. Okay. Now, they upgraded the Wi-Fi from 802.11n single band to 802.11ac. Uh, dual band. Yeah, with the five. With with, Bluetooth, with five gigahertz radio on yep. it now, um, and Bluetooth 4.2 LE. What they've changed is number one, they've added a heat spreader to the Wi-Fi, which is good. Um, they've also changed their antenna technology. Uh, the antenna is now integrated into the PCB rather than being on chip, which means we should get better Wi-Fi performance, which we were already seeing on the Pi W. Okay. Uh, on the on the Zero W. Here's the cooler thing. Uh, from a manufacturing, product development, whatever standpoint, um, the entire board is now certified through every regulatory agency as a radio. Holy crap. Just, no, sorry, but someone... Joe! Joe! <laughs> Welcome back, my friend! <laughs> stupid Joe. <laughs> no, not stupid Joe. I mean, Joe. great Joe, but wow. Yeah, geez. You are freaking I think, awesome. I think he's like, buy a Raspberry Pi now. That's right. <laughs> Do a video on one. That's right. <laughs> I might have to do a, a video on the new Pi. That might, um, that might be fun. Anyway, um, why that is the Wi-Fi, yeah. Why, um, uh, so for, for those of you who don't know, uh, country or regional regulations for, for radios. So uh, there's FCC, EU, Canadian, Class 10. There, there's, there's a whole bunch of different standards for uh, wireless interference, radiation standards, all that kind of thing. Um, cheers, Joe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, we might do a shot later too. Yeah, well, I mean that's fifty bucks. You know what? We got the rum there. Yeah, ooh, a little, little spot of rum. 
T tell you what, grab, grab me some, uh, I got some. That's a chair there. That's a chair. This office is so small. I got the tiny ones. Yep, perfect. Joe. Oh, there we go. Look at a man. Actually, I, I did want to try this rum straight. I did, I did too. So, Joe just gave us an excuse. <laughs> No, I actually saw a video of uh, um, someone actually did a performance already on this really? video uh, comparing it to the Raspberry Pi 3 just B. Yeah. And did the, the wireless. Cheers. Cheers, Joe. Cheers, Joe. Oh, that's mm. super good. I don't know. That's, that's, that's pretty close to Jamaican rum. That is. It's, it's sweeter than Jamaican rum. It is. That's got a lot of caramel notes to it. Yeah. Um, a sugar cane. Yeah. Um, I'm tasting a lot of caramel in that. Wow. Yeah. Um, by the way, that's 94 proof. It, it's, it's not a light rum. 95, yeah. Yeah, 97 or... 47.5%. Uh, yeah. Um, but, so uh, that yeah. That is delicious. That is good. But, um, uh, yeah, they did. They, she did a Wi-Fi test, yeah. uh, file transfer test. It did actually improve it. She did a uh, 720p uh, video file, and it being like uh -huh. four and a half gigs. Uh, it took the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, to do it, I think it was like 26 minutes, mm -hmm. and it took this one 16. Mm -hmm. So And that was over Wi-Fi. Right. So a huge, significant improvement, oh, like you were talking about. That is good. <laughs> I did mine in two swigs. Yeah. Yeah, that was good enough for one. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's good beer. Although now we have spiced rum and coconut beer. That's right. Ooh, that changed the flavor entirely. Yes, that, that did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the beer we were drinking is Ballast Points um, Coconut Victory by the Sea. That's right, sea. we never introduced the uh, So beer. the this beer is a Imperial coconut porter yep. at 10%. Yep. Actually, it's pretty bitter. It's a 60 IBUs. Yeah. For or 65, a, I think. Yeah, for an, for an Imperial Porter, it's it's really it's, bitter. It's really bitter, um, um, but you taste a lot of coconut. A lot of coconut. Um, anyway, the reason that the regulatory <coughs> certification on the entire Wait. board is important is if I were designing a product for the Raspberry Pi and I were to sell that product with a Raspberry Pi in it, um, before, the Raspberry Pi only had certification on the Wi-Fi adapter itself. And so you would still have to go through FCC certification. For two products? Uh, for, uh, for, the, for your product. Oh, okay. Um, so if I, let's say I was making a, an LCD picture frame, for example, that I sold with a Raspberry Pi on board. Uh, thank Thanks, you, Tech Bank. Bank. Two bucks, you the man. Toast to Mr. Hawking. Um, so let's, let's say I'm making a, an, an LCD picture frame and I'm selling it with a Raspberry Pi on the back of it and I am selling the whole package complete to you as a consumer. Um, the Raspberry Pi has already gotten their radio FCC approved. Um, what I would have to do is because I'm selling with that radio on board, I would have to re-go through FCC certification, which takes, if you're a small company, uh, takes a lot of lawyers, it takes a lot of paperwork, it takes a lot of time. So there could be companies that are, have a product ready to ship that integrates the Raspberry Pi in that are eight months from market because they're simply waiting on regulatory compliance. Yeah. Um, well, eight months, you're gonna fall behind. Exactly. Else is gonna, some Chinese right. dude's gonna rip you off. Now what they can do is they can take, take the Raspberry Pi and say, the board, our PCB that's going into the system is already certified. All we have to do is do radiation compliance testing on our electronic product, which basically they put it in a thing and go, yep, it's good. And then they put the pie in it and you're good to sell it. Um, so excellent, excellent improvement to the pie and something that should make this even more friendly for uh, for and, system integrators, yeah. for, for people who are using this as a controller board for their larger products, for yeah. their larger consumer products. So actually, yeah, a lot of those um, Kickstarters mm -hmm. and, um, oh gosh, you know, do-it-yourself people right. that are, hey, buy this product, I make it for you fresh. This should help a lot. Actually, I did want to buy one of those uh, automatic cocktail makers. I've, I've thought about building one of those. Yeah, I so I, I saw some plans for one, and it ended up being like, $700 for the all the material, the raw yeah. material. 
And that's, you, have, you have to get the distolic pumps that, yeah, that never exactly. touch the liquid. And, and then and then the guy's like, but I'll build it for you for eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. And it'll become pre assembled for you. Yeah. Well, I'll just do that. It's like, screw yeah, that, you yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. see, so. see, I enjoy mixing cocktails, but I also do uh, bartending for like family parties and things like that. So we'll we'll get 30 people together at, at, a, at a place and I'll just bartend. I'll, I'll just do open bar. Uh, what do you want? I'll mix it up. I'll, yeah. I'll do a whole full drink menu. And, and I enjoy mixing. But part of me would go, you know, it'd be really cool if I can get like seven or eight bottles and a couple juice bottles and a soda bottle or something like that and just all hook them up to a raspberry pie that has a touchscreen menu that says, oh, I want a Manhattan. And I click Manhattan exactly, yeah. and it makes I, you a I Manhattan. I mean, you're not going to get the, I saw one that actually did shake and grind yeah. and everything and muddle. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you they know. Get but, the vibrator on Yeah, it exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spend that. It's actually the one I was looking at. It's only in Europe and they only lease it out. I, don't be laughing at Rhett's comments. <laughs> I know that's what you looked at. That's exactly <laughs> I think, All I see is Jeff laughing on the side. I'm like, I know you read Rhett's comment. That's right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it would be perfect for just you know a two to three drink minimum where you're not adding ice of any kind. Right. It, I think it'd be a fun little project. I think it would too. Yeah. So let's get on to the big news of the week, um, and that that was yesterday, um, and that is uh, a. It's this is all true, guys. 100%, this is all true. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Sell your AMD chips. Sell your stock. Get rid of them. Hide your wives. Don't even do it. Go buy Intel. Go buy Intel. <laughs> From our point of view, AMD is evil. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was bad. Yeah. Well, you're not sponsored. Friggin' CNET with the. Uh... Oh, the black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's your ad blocker right there. Oh, you know what? It's actually behind it's, our. Yeah, our that doesn't matter. That's fine. Okay. You're you're not seeing what we're seeing. So. Now. Uh, CNET, to my knowledge and recollection, was the first one to publish uh, this piece as a news app. Um, and what I'm talking about is late Monday morning or early Thursday. I, or early I thought Tuesday. it was Tuesday. I thought it was Tuesday, um, but it could be wrong. Um, so, so sometime in that time frame, um, a previously unknown security research firm called CTS Labs um, released a white paper on 13 potential AMD CPU flaws akin to Meltdown Inspector. Um, and, they, and they were claiming that they were on the level of Meltdown Inspector. Um, they, they went through all the variants, which is Rise and Fall, Master Key, Falla, and Chimera, which are just some wittily they, yeah. clever names. All right. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, <laughs> ri rise and Fall. Rise and Fall, I know. <laughs> Um, Wasn't Chimera like one of the viruses on a movie? It might have been like, so, a, like Swordfish. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Oh, we gotta go get the Chimera. Yeah. <laughs> or no, maybe I'm thinking. Um, oh gosh, what's that stupid large monster movie with the giant robots? Oh, uh, Titanfall. Titan, not Titan, but it's a movie. Oh, uh, they come out with oh, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. Yeah. What are those Chimeras or Chim the Chimera? Virus. Chim yeah, whatever those large monsters were. I was like, oh, I've heard that before. Why does it sound familiar? Uh, all right. Oh, we got fighting words here. Per Carter Kirk. Oh, it's Picard all Picard, the way. Picard. No, Kirk Kirk was just this suave, cool guy. Picard, like, sit there and he commanded the right. ship. Um, Kirk. Kirk's I, a cowboy. Kirk is a cowboy and I would let him fly my ship. I would not let him tell 30 people what to do. Yeah, he he's John Wayne yeah. of, of the yeah. Star Trek universe. Yes. He's the John Wayne. I think Picard... Actually, that, that'd be hard to go off. I, I was about to say... Um, Clint Eastwood, but no, Clint Eastwood would be would be wrong. Yeah. So if you're on Discord, we're talking Star yeah. Trek again. So all yeah, of a sudden, that, that's another. Uh, <laughs> that's another. Yeah, we can go on that. But back to AMD. Back to back AMD. Back to AMD. Um, so the security firm research and said 13 vulnerabilities with four main vulnerabilities or four classes of vulnerabilities with 13 exploits within them. Yeah. Um, and they said, oh, any any enterprise network with an AMD chip is potentially vulnerable, and you should shut down that AMD system. And uh, uh, now we've talked about black hat and white hat hacking before uh, on this show. Um, and we've talked about um, there are wrong ways to do it and there are right ways to do it. If you are a security research firm like Google Team Zero, um, the right way to do it is reach out to Intel, reach out to AMD, say we found some pretty critical security flaws in your system. Here's the proof of concept for it. You need to patch this. 
we're going to give you and all your board partners six months before yeah. we publicly release the source code for what we found. That is the proper way to do a security bulletin release that keeps everyone safe, that keeps everything working as it should. AMD was given 24 hours notice. And in fact, they shopped this story around to news outlets and briefed the news outlets. And then the day before release, they said, oh, by the way, AMD, we found a whole bunch of results. It's publishing Monday morning. Yeah. Which is, which is, this is crap. Yeah. That's it, crap. That's so, not how you do this. Right. And, uh, but the way it's written, it's written like a smear campaign. If, if did you read the white paper? Did, did I didn't you, read, I, I, I watched the video yeah. and then I, I read some of the snippet parts of this, but, yeah. um, this, I didn't get to this part yeah. that, that the um, screenshots. So let me see if I can. I read this. Yeah. Uh, this is one that really gets into the nitty gritty of it and I didn't link it, but Gamers Nexus today posted a fantastic write-up. So go to gamersnexus.com, watch Steve's video and read his write-up because uh, uh, they, they went to a, a couple of security contacts that they have in the industry. I'm I'm still nobody in the industry. I, I've, I've got a contact at Creative Labs and I have a contact for a couple of no-name manufacturers that I'm working on getting parts from. But uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, uh, I, I secured my first retail review sample today. Really? I did. Ooh, it's, I am it's, super excited. Is it, is it your vacuum cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. If you watch my skit at the end of the last video, nope, still didn't get the vacuum cleaner. Uh, I'm still manual over here. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, anyways, Gamers Nexus did a fantastic write-up. I didn't link this down here, but go look him up. Um, uh, Tech Report was one of the first that I found that started to call into question the motives behind the research firm and the validity of the claims. And uh, to be clear, I am not saying that all of these claims are BS. I'm not saying that there is no vulnerability here. I'm saying these claims are wild, outlandish, hyperbole, probably poorly worded, overblown, and for 99.999, as far as you want to take that decimal repeating, you have nothing to worry about. Um, and the reason being is every single exploit essentially requires physical access to the machine with root access. You know, they're, they're, okay. well, if yeah, you have root access to a machine, you can already exploit said machine. <laughs> that, that is lockdown 101. Set your boot devices so only your devices can boot. Um, <laughs> set your... Who's... Joe and Rhett and me are going at it. <laughs> uh, didn't they give you warning over 12 months for the last set of problems on the CPU and Intel co uh, cocked up the patching? No, uh, they didn't give them 12 months. They gave them six months. I thought it was uh, four. They, uh, oh, yeah. uh, no, they were, they were let... They, they were informed of Spectre and Meltdown as early as June. Uh, of last year, mm. and the they were released uh, in sometime in December, I believe. Might have even been January that mm. they were publicly released. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We, we we talked about this. Uh, we, 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 yeah, we had we had notification of Spectre being. Yeah. In it fact, was it was, be, the, it was yeah. the show immediately after CES. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, there was. That was. Uh, uh, Dece I think it was December. I, th I, almost, I think it was December. It was supposed to be released. In December, right? Uh, the they they they. Or they released it in December. No, they 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 let the public know that some security vulnerabilities are coming, and then in January they released the source code. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was, was five months to disclose and and an, adi an additional month, month until we public. released the yeah. tools. Yeah. Um. So that is the proper way to do it. And to be fair to Intel, this is an architectural problem that is baked into every single chip dating back to the original 486. So it's not exactly a simple software fix. Uh, so if they they cocked up the uh, you're not going to go uh, download a driver and fix yeah this. yeah you're not going to download a driver you're not going to go oh we just won't use that feature it's it's baked into the hardware chipset very very deep level you're not just going to fix this with software um, anyway um, so like I said I'm not calling out the validity of these claims but I'm saying they are vastly overblown and. If you get to the point where you can't exploit one of these flaws, the, your system is already compromised for whatever you want to do. 
And they're using a lot of scary words in here that really have no bearing on the situation. They're saying, oh, they can inject persistent malware. And can you believe AMD is building AI that's going to go into self-driving cars? <laughs> and can you... Yeah, they're, um, they're just on a rampage right. of... So, and, he, and here's the other thing. Blonde-haired dictator <laughs> right. that we all know. <laughs> right, and, and here's, here's the other thing is... Uh, about 20 minutes after the CTS Labs findings were revealed, their white paper was published, a group called Viceroy Research uh, published a 25-page PDF breakdown. Oh, is this the one that the white paper? Of yeah. the findings. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, yeah, I, I think I know where you're going to go with this. So in 20 minutes, yep. you wrote 25 pages of technical breakdown without revealing source code or details or peer reviewing or anything else, just... We went through our own research firm and we found that uh, this is all 100% valid and you should sell all of your AMD stock immediately because this company is going to tank and in our view, AMD has zero dollar valuation on the stock market. Uh, now, interesting note, Viceroy Research has done this kind of bull crap before, once in South Africa and once in Germany, once to a bank and once to another organization I'm, it's, I'm drawing a blank on right now. Um, for stock market manipulation, short yep, selling yep, yep, stocks yep, yep, to make yep, yep. millions in a couple of hours. Yeah, I skimmed through this one, but yeah, I remember that part. Right. So you take CTS Labs and they're kind of, okay, I guess it's kind of an exploit if you have root access. I mean, yeah, you can screw up the machine uh, yeah, with root access. Uh, yeah. Um, if I'm directly plugged in and I, right. yeah, I'm the admin, and technically number, I can do whatever I want. Right. And, and number two, a coordinated release with Viceroy Research, a firm that has been known to do stock market manipulation in other markets. Um, the problem is they just effed with the, the U.S. stock market, which means they effed with the SEC, Ooh. Security Exchange Commission, <laughs> um, which the Security Exchange Commission is a group that only has power within the United States, but they don't just have power within the United States. <laughs> They're a group that you do not piss off. <laughs> and uh, so there's a lot of speculation that a lot of bad things are coming to them. Um, I will say there was news going on about, um, uh, well, CTS oh. Labs is in... What? Joe, Joe did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, great Joe, but man, come on, man. <laughs> Joe, I love you. I love you, buddy. He, we were just talking. I was like, oh, I don't get paid till next week. I was like, oh, <laughs> good. No, Joe dropped another 50. You know, hey. someone else has got to pick up the slack. Joe, you are carrying this channel in Super Chat. You are <laughs> absolutely keeping the lights on here. Anyone else going to match Joe? <laughs> even, tell, even half Joe. Tell, tell you what. I already took a shot. I, I will dig into my cupboard and I'll dig someone else, something else out if someone wants to match Joe. Yes, I am begging for more money right now for my alcohol consumption. Right. So There we go. So tell you what, if you, if you want to match Joe, I'll do another shot. I don't know about Joe because he's got to drive, but... Yeah, what? <laughs> I'll, I'll sip on it. <laughs> but Joe, again, thank you, Thank buddy. you, man. Awesome. Slap, slap, slap. Mm. Rhett and I are in a text fight right yep. now um but yeah no, did, didn't they uh they released a video on this so and, and uh, or the interviews so cts labs released a video um and uh it's not this one it's no no it's 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 somewhere else uh where they did the, the screenshots the, right yeah gosh that, that was horrible yeah. so I'm, I'm gonna i'll just, just i don't want to give them any more views but i'll play the uh how many views is it already at it wasn't much. Uh, there it there is. There it is. Yeah, 13. But still. 13,000 views. That's, it should, that's... Well, yeah, it should be a lot more if this was a big scandal. Right. But... Oh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. So, so this that, is. That looks a little funky. So this is Ido <laughs> Leon. And uh, gosh, I've seen this effect before. Uh, he's sitting in front of a green screen. Okay. Um, and by the way, we'll get to Ido Leon here in just a minute, who's supposedly the CEO, CFO. Uh, Rhett, two dollars. Rhett, all right. My buddy. Slap, slap, slap. At, at that, Rhett is awesome on Twitter. <laughs> That's not matching Joe, though, Rhett. Come on. Yeah. 
Well, if we can get to fifty dollars, I'll I'll do another. Uh, well, so uh, we had we have Rhett at two dollars, and then we had uh, oh, we got we got Tank Bag at two, so I'm at four dollars. So yeah, forty six dollars, and I'll do another shot. Technically, uh, Joe did a hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> Joe did a hundred dollars. I'll I'll do one of Joe's. <laughs> I would do half of Joe's. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so they filmed a flaming shot of one fifty. No, we are not doing a Whoa. flaming shot of one fifty one, Steve. Well, I, I don't have any 151. Oh, okay. Um, what's the highest proof I have? Probably that stuff. No, I got some... I think I got some stuff over 100. That would work. I'm trying to think. Um, I've got the double black, which is another 95. I think 95 is about as top as I got. Yeah. Right now. So no flaming shots tonight. Um, anyway, so uh, everyone was... Now, now, by the way, CTS Labs had enough time to film that video and do all these fancy graphics and everything else. Um, and all of their backgrounds were 100% Shutterstock images that I can go and purchase myself and, and throw behind me. <laughs> yeah, I know, they just, oh, here, let's adjust the levels and the contrast. Right. Just the hair, too, that's the thing, it's yep. just the hair. Or uh, I really like the- Well, at uh, one point, uh, this guy's hair was fading through his head. Yeah, no, I actually, I love the middle one, is uh, the the background is so zoomed in, if you actually watch the video, it actually starts getting pixelated. Well, what they do is they started keying in the green yeah. screen, so it was actually a well-done green screen effect, um, which I've seen in a lot of production videos like this. But, uh, and, and so they would, they would zoom in on the camera and they, they had key markers on the wall so they could adjust the, the background framing to the, the real world framing. But it was still just this garbage production video. Um, and, it, you uh, know, it, it was obvious this was all pre-planned, probably, right. you know, months or two in advance. So, so here, is, advance. here is my breakdown on what this is. Um, what this is, is some potentially and I'm using that word very loosely, potential vulnerabilities that are not just AMD specific. Um, and I highly doubt that the persistent malware is actually a thing because what they said is, if I, if I can modify the bio, if I can flash a board BIOS by using a, uh, a valid signed driver uh, from a manufacturer. So from a, <laughs> I, I would have to fake a certificate on a driver to inject malware into it, to get it to run my malicious code, to flash the BIOS onto a board that is very specific for that task, that <laughs> it's outlandish and laughable because you still need root access to do all that. Um, that, yeah, that can technically happen, but that can technically happen on any yeah, platform uh, that's out there. Yeah, no matter what <laughs> server you're at. Oh, I'm gonna plug right. in, yeah. Well, right, exactly. I, I so, can do this. So it is so far removed from what is in the realm of a, a viable attack methodology to be conceivable. Um, and you start linking together all these, these dots on the interwebs that there's no technical details released <clears throat> with the CTS labs, and the CTS labs is aggressive and hyperbole language throughout, I want to say. Because um, the white paper is just laughable at times. Well, there, there's also a boilerplate both on the CTS Labs website as well as on the end of their white paper PDF that says we are not an organization that, oh yeah, that, was that you should take financial information from. Yeah, um, we we either, what is it, it says something like we... I, 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 I did yeah, this right. was actually the one part that almost made me think that it was like, this is almost just as bad as like a disgruntled employee right. from AMD getting fired. Was like, screw this, I'm gonna go screw the company. Right. This so, is kind of uh, how that, the feel, or a company, as soon as I read that, I was like, oh wow, that's exactly so, what it is. He just tried to cover his so, butt. So, so we'll, we'll back up just a little bit. My first inclination that this might be fake and or overblown was AMD's official response to this. That they, they said, uh, very early on in the release, they said at AMD security is a top priority and we are continually working to ensure the safety of our users as new risks arise. We are investigating this report, which we just received to understand the methodology and merit of the findings, end quote. So it's like, okay, AMD is aware of it and they're starting to look into it, cool. Um, they then later issued a, a revision to that, that public statement on their blog that says, quote, we have just received a report from a company called CTS Labs claiming that there are potential vulnerabilities related to a cert 
to certain of our processors, um, to certain uh, builds of our processors. Uh, we are actively investigating and analyzing its findings. This company was previously unknown to AMD, and we find it unusual for a security firm to publish its research to the press without providing a reasonable amount of time for the company to investigate and address its findings. At AMD, security is a top priority, and we are continually working to ensure the safety of our users as potential new risks arise. We will update this blog as news develops. Yeah. They call out the validity of these claims by saying... We don't know who the living hell these people yeah. are. <laughs> well, yeah, what, what is it? Uh, they, they said that uh, the, <laughs> the domain was even just purchased back in July. The domain was purchased. It was actually June 25th, or which is two weeks after companies were disclosed about Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. <clears throat> okay. Um, so... Again, we're, we're looking at timelines here. We're looking at validity of claims. We're looking at smoking guns. The fact that a domain for CTS Labs was purchased two weeks after uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the Spectre meltdown initial disclosures took place is suspicious. It, the, it's the, not out of the, the realm of possibility, no. but it's suspicious. Well, it's even more suspicious when they say, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've been years. in business with the, with the, with se yeah, with security. the, with the Syrian and Israeli, Israeli military is doing security yeah. research for 20 years. For 20 years, but we just now got a domain name right. last month. And, but now we're <laughs> going to start looking into other companies for possible security yeah. research claims. Um, yeah. <laughs> not only that, but uh, AMD Flaws was registered February 10th, I believe. Um, and amdflaws.com. So they, they went through the, not only did they go through the trouble of producing that video, they also bought a domain and built what looks like a Squarespace website. No offense to Squarespace. Squarespace, please call me. <laughs> um, Jeff needs a new website. I need a new website. Don't go to my website. Um, <laughs> uh, what looks like a Squarespace website that is even more hyperbole and overblown claims than, than what was in the original white paper. And, and it's written by the firm, so it's like, it's just terrible. None of this makes any sense. None of this gives me any credence. I, I, I work for a technology, I, I work in IT for a living. I, it's my job to pay attention to security vulnerabilities, exploits, uh, potential, links into our system, potential breaches in our system. None of this is how white hack or black hack hackers operate. Yeah. None of this makes any sense. Like, well, like I said, this except for the purpose of market manipulation. Market manipulation, or it was just like a disgruntled employee <laughs> really trying to, but yeah, I, I, I think it was more market. Because of the ties to Viceroy Research, it is 100% pure market manipulation. Yeah. It was short sell tactics um, to get to get the stock market to drop so we can buy half a million stocks to then... God continue. damn you, Joe. God damn it. <laughs> Joe, are you married? <laughs> <laughs> what does your wife have to think of if you have one? Yes, thank you. God damn it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Cheers, my friend. Now, now I... Um, I, I will level with you, Joe. I have I've had conversations with my wife in the last uh, three or four months um, that, shot. that I'm going to leave her to marry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I would like to take this more from just a hobby. I originally started this channel that I wanted to pay for my hobby or share my passions with YouTube or just share with my friends the things that I enjoy. I enjoy craft beer. I enjoy cocktails. I enjoy. Booze and computers. Booze and com I, I enjoy booze and computers and Star Trek first and foremost in my life. That is my passion from wake up to go to bed. Um, or at least get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, since December, my channel has exploded in viewership and it's on an exponential growth curve, which I am very happy and very proud of. I have since talked to her that I want to essentially make this my living uh, and... Um, I, I want to turn my channel into something that I can do full time. And people like you help. <laughs> and Joe, Joe, get a raise because you're going to need to pay for him. <laughs> uh, we should make a flaming mo. We should. That, I was like, man, that's perfect for my channel. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to use actual cough syrup. Uh, Joe, get a new website. <laughs> I didn't read the text. 
Yes. Uh, uh, Joe, tell Joe, you what. He, gonna, he's going to go get one of those uh, GoDaddy uh, no, 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 builders. No. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take your $50 that you just gave me for that. I'm going to take that and I'm going to buy myself a Squarespace website. Be all, end all, done, sign the contract, done. Um, Squarespace. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> Squarespace. Um, I am totally going to do that. Um, so thank you, Joe, <laughs> for looking up my website, the abomination <laughs> that it is. Uh, basically, the reason I bought the website, it was a placeholder in case this thing became anything. Um, when I decided on the name Craft Computing, I made one vital mistake in the procurement of Craft Computing as a domain. Um, I said, Craft Computing, I like the name. Is it available? It's available. No one's claimed it yet. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to sleep on it. I'm going to think, do I want to be known as Craft Computing if this thing blows up for the rest of my life? Do I ever want to change that name? Do I want to go through that mm -hmm. process? No. I want to determine what is my channel name from day one and own and it. stick to it. And yeah. own it. That's, this, is, this is computing. brand right here. I, I, am. I am craft computing no matter where my channel goes, what trajectory I go on. If I give up the beer, if I give up the tech, I don't care. I, I am, am craft I am computing. Jeff from uh, craft computing. I am Jeff at craft computing. So I, uh, so I went to bed. I slept on it. I woke up the next morning and I went, I like the name. I like the name. I think I can do something with it. I got on to the website, which the day before had quoted me $12.95 uh, for the domain. Someone had saw that I looked up the domain, craft.com, and they bought it, and they are now squatting it for $2,500. This guy right here. No, it's not you. <laughs> I know. I looked up the owner, <laughs> and I sent him a scathing email because he's a dirty, slimy mother... <laughs> yeah, I hate people that do that. It's, it's a... It's a you, you are welcome to do that because I didn't buy the domain. You're totally <laughs> welcome to do that, but you're a slimy son of a bitch and I hate you. <laughs> so I bought craftcomputing.net for $12. Oh, net? Oh, that's so... I'm at yeah, craftcomputing.net. Dot net. Dot net. Dot net. And, should... I, and I don't care. <laughs> if if it ever goes down, I... I you should go... You should see if they have a dot beer. Or dot... That's album, a good idea. You know. That's a good idea. Now that you said it, someone's going to so, go buy it. Joe, don't buy it. <laughs> Quick, go buy it, and he'll pay you the $50 yeah. back. Anyway, so I went and bought craftcomputing.net. I then went and got onto any social media I could potentially think of that I could ever use for the purpose Dang of it. the channel, and I got craft computing on that. Yeah. So I have an Instagram, I have a Twitter, I have the, the craftcomputing.net, and all I'm doing is literally squatting on craftcomputing.net with a Google Sites and a uh, and like a blog I think it's built on Blogger even. No. It's a Terry. Yeah. Oh, don't, that's a horror. Don't look at me like that's that. That's all right. Yeah, I know. I, I, do, I did the square thing. It's fine. Right. Right. So. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not like it needs to be a specialty website or anything. You're not selling anything on it. Uh, so I need a fundraiser. I need a fundraiser, but I don't know that at this point in my life I want to do a fundraiser to buy craftcomputing.com because to me, it's not worth it. To me, what would be You're worth it is, is generating more content for this channel. Um, for my startup costs, to everyone gets onto my channel and they compliment my production value on my channel. You would not believe how expensive production value is. Oh, uh, I, I watched you buy these things and you're like, check this cool thing. I'm like, well, how much you spend on that? Right. Yeah. I just got a new camera now. Which I, is sweet. You like that camera? That is there, I was even going to talk to you after. Like, hey, well, where do I get that? Right. So, um, so I, I'll, I'll actually grab one of the cameras that I started this channel with. This is the camera that I started my channel with. This is a Canon Vixia HF R600. This is what you were streaming on. What two? The last time, the, the last yeah. I was the last one to have this. Right. I think you were because yeah. uh, Steve was the. Or no, Rhett. Rhett was the first. Yeah, yeah, we started streaming with this camera last week. Yeah, and so I, yeah, um, I was the last one on this. So camera. if you've noticed, uh, I, Your I battery's look, still on. I look much more dapper. That yes, uh, it's uh, it's much improved. Anyway, the reason I bought this camera was it records 25 megabit 1080p at 60 fps, and I decided early on uh, from my very first video, if I'm going to be marketing myself to PC enthusiasts. I have to be PC Master Race and I have to broadcast in 60 frames per second. Oh, yeah. It makes it difficult on the photo end because you have to do twice as much light to the camera to record 60 FPS. And so you actually sacrifice some image clarity when you do that. Yeah, if you notice it's like right here, really clear, <laughs> everything else around us. 
Well, no, that, that's depth of field, well, yeah. and, and that's, a, that's a given effect. Um, but I could do that same depth of field with half the amount of light in this room if I was recording at 30. Mm. Um, so it's, it, it's kind of this weird thing with, yeah, we're looking dapper, drunker, th thank you. <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Anyway, this is the camera I started this channel on. I picked this camera up for $110 on eBay because I can film with it, it can be an A camera, it has built-in stabilization, and I can buy a cage for it, and I can do it as a vlogging camera. That's why I bought this. Yeah, it's multi-purpose for a hundred bucks. Yeah, you wanted to take it to CES, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, I, uh, a couple of my early videos were filmed with this. In fact, the majority of my early videos were filmed with yeah. this camera. Um, and very, I, very good. I mean, everyone's. This right. is this is the video, the camera that got you the. This has good quality. Exactly. From episode one, this is the camera. Yeah. Um, starting around the time that I moved into my house, um, so my average gamer's PC, I switched over to a Sony NEX5R, which again, I bought for about $140, and then I bought a couple lenses for it, um, and I got better quality. And again, it records at the same exact codec, 25 megabit, or I think it was 28 megabit at 1080p 60 FPS, and that did okay but I was still lacking some clarity that I wanted for the channel. So I just went out and I bought a Sony a6000. Um, again, a used camera, but it uses all the same lenses that I just bought for my Sony camera. Um, and this records XAVC codec at 60 or at uh, 50 megabit per second. Much better codec, much better quality. It also does live HDMI out so I can do my live streaming from that camera. Um, so I've spent $800 in camera gear. Um, this desk that I built, I've spent $700 on this desk getting this up to snuff. That's not even like the hardware that I need to review. <laughs> That's just <laughs> buying the stuff to sit things on. Um, so I, I'm about five or six grand into my, my studio in all because I've got lighting, I've got microphones, I've got sound equipment. My goal from the very beginning was high production value. And, and it's paying off in droves because people are coming to the channel and they go, oh my God, you only have... 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 subs, but, I'm growing, more, but yeah. I'm growing because people enjoy the content that I'm creating. They like me for some reason, and they enjoy Stupid. that it's at a high quality. Yes, and, and this, <clears throat> the amount of money you have in here, Joe, half of this is yours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, you've at least filled, or you've bought some bottles of my liquor cabinet. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, I should do a tour of my liquor cabinet someday. Yeah, you know that you know it would wouldn't be a, a bad video. Wouldn't be a bad video. Would a be a behind the scenes of craft computing. Yeah, I've I've looked at uh, in fact I do have a behind the scenes video coming up. Um my first retail sample that I'm getting. Um because I've uh, I've done uh my very first review product that I got was this uh the lens, yeah. Oh, was the no the, the camera. Oh the, the camera the, the cam I thought it was a Logitech lens adapter or yeah, whatever. But, yeah, but it was the um it was this guy. It was the Kurokasu um, Logitech C920 uh, aluminum camera body housing replacement that allows you to adapt a CS lens to. Uh, this was the very first product I received for free. It's very close to my heart. I love the product. Um, it does okay, but it needed a better quality lens and I, I wasn't willing to invest the money into that when I needed a studio camera. Um, so, <laughs> But yeah, I, I hold this product very close to me. I've, I've, I've received a couple other things for free directly to my site. And I've received some stuff from Modders Inc. I've, a, a lot of these computers lot of these and cases, cases and whatnot behind me, yeah. they're from my work that I've done with Modders Inc. But Most of these boxes that you can't see behind oh is all Modders Inc. Oh, God, the boxes, they're just, <laughs> yeah. they're everywhere. That's what Jeff's wife's really complaining about the channel. Yeah, she, she actually complains about the space. And I, <laughs> I, I took over our den. We no longer have a den. Um, but anyway... Um, so I, you know, I'm starting to accumulate things from Modders Inc. and that is helping my channel grow, but I'm also starting to reach out as Craft Computing, looking for retail samples, review samples, things like that. And I, I obtained my first one the other day, where at the end of, or be, first week of April, I will be shipped my first retail review product from a major manufacturer. Fantastic. Yeah, obviously um, you can't say it right I now. Can't, but I, that's, I, I can't uh, reveal that. it right now. I'm not gonna re reveal it right now, but I am super excited. Maybe. My channel has enough of a following because you guys watch it, because you guys like what I do, and the manufacturers like my point of view on things. I've established enough of a reputation that they are willing to take that chance. So, uh, how tall am I? Pretty big, over six foot. I am six foot four. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm only six. Yeah. Um, now, these chairs are really tiny chairs. They're like Ikea elementary school chairs. Yeah, mo most of the furniture you'd see here is so, actually Ikea. So to put this in perspective, because I've used this before, if you've ever watched uh, Paul and Kyle on Awesome Hardware, this is the exact same desk setup that Paul and Kyle built. And when you look at them, I knew Kyle was kind of short, but I thought Paul was like average sized. Apparently they're both kind of short. In fact, I ran into them at CES and they're both kind of short. <laughs> okay. Um, and, but I didn't realize that because I built this desk out of the exact same components that they built the desk for. And then I sat down and I went, wow, I take up two thirds of this. Thing. <laughs> I can't fit another person next to me. <laughs> and so I ended up buying these really tiny. Oh yeah, they're, they're tiny. <laughs> They are super small Ikea chairs, simply so I mean, they're, they're I cheap sit plastic. So I sit low enough on frame that we can sit next to each other yeah. and not crowd each other. Oh, I, I, I'm on the edge. Of, you yeah. can't see this, but like, yeah, okay. Yeah. My arm usually <laughs> takes up the edge of yeah. the table. Yeah, yeah. If you notice them kind of doing this thing throughout the, that's just for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my God. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. What is the record that Joe put down that you uh, made one night? It was it was the first time. Joe, Joe just passed it. Joe, Joe put down one hundred and forty dollars the first night. Suck it, Rhett. <laughs> That's right. Joe, what up, my dude? All right, that I, I will take another shot for that. I don't. I don't care if Jeff takes it. I will go just raid Jeff's cabinet liquor and just be like, I'm gonna go chug something. Joe, call out a liquor. Just Joe, yeah. call out a liquor. What a guy, right? What a guy, Joe. Call out a liquor and I will shoot it. I, I will drink I would, it, I will pour it, I will, I will like a rock. I will shotgun this beer for you, Joe. Joe, call out a liquor. I'm waiting for you in chat. I know there, there's like a 30 second delay. What a guy. What a guy. Joe, you are the man. You just bought me liquor. I'm gonna go open the cabinet. We got whiskey, we got scotch, we got rum, we got vodka, we got amaretto, we got... Butt chug, butt chug, butt, butt chug. chug, butt chug. Um, I can go gross if you want. I've got gin, I've got peppermint schnapps. Goodness gracious. Steve's calling for 151. <laughs> like I said, the strongest two things that I have are the 95 proof. Yeah. I've got 295 proof. Uh, uh, Jeffy says whiskey. What do you have? What Joe wants have? to know what you have. He just, yeah. I've got cognac. Cognac. I've got, I've got tequila. Tequila. If you can't hear, I'm sure you probably could. It just might be a little weak. Uh, yeah, it's pretty weak over here. Um, tell you what, we'll, we'll... Hard water. No, that's, that's Steve. Never mind. Yeah. Any gold? Is, Joe actually asked for any gold. I, I'm, I'm out of gold. I have caskmates. He has caskmates. You want to do caskmates? Yeah, I, I haven't bought my, my gold yet. I haven't bought the gold yet. I, I can do cask mates. I can do cask mates or I can do Johnny Walker Double Black if you want to go, go a little more expensive bottles. Uh, I think we're just going to go cask mates. All right, that's fine. So, in fact, we may empty the decanter and then I can uh, buy a bottle of gold and we'll fill the there decanter you go, the with gold. Yep. Tin, tequila, and pepper. That's Steve. <laughs> of course, Steve. All at once. There we go. They're heavy pours, so sorry. No, I don't. I, I would <laughs> take the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> Stomach ache. There we go. Okay, yeah. no, Joe. Joe actually said tequila with peppermint schnapps. Wow. Joe um, just dropped uh, two hundred and fifty bucks. He did. Uh, two hundred bucks. Two hundred? No, no. Is that two fifty? Two fifty. Holy. Yeah. Joe, holy shit. <laughs> so. Uh, I can't put that. I, I gotta get the funnel to get that back in the decanter. I, I would drink it. And so. <laughs> Tequila and peppermint schnapps. Tequila and peppermint schnapps. Well, I gotta wake up in the morning. I mean, I'll be. That, I, actually, I think it's gonna be a lot. I hate tequila, Joe. I hate tequila too. I hate tequila so much. It's, it's okay. It's Jose Silver. Oh, it's... I mean, for for a tequila, it's okay. For a tequila. God and damn. Taco Bell hot sauce. <laughs> That's Steve. Yeah. Of course it is. I'm gonna. But of course it's Monarch peppermint schnapps. Oh, hey, you know what? Actually, you know, I actually really like the Monarch coconut. 
for mixing. It's not bad. It's not bad it's because not bad. because I don't have to add a lot and I get a lot of coconut flavor. Yeah, I, I, I use this for, for flavoring for other drinks. Yeah, that, that, that I use a lot of Monarch and I can use half the amount of most things to get the amount of flavor yeah. I want. <laughs> uh, Joe, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the peppermint shops isn't bad. Oh, God. Man, I hate tequila, Joe. I hate tequila. <laughs> uh, Tell you what, we'll do like a half of each. That, uh, I'm gonna just mix mine in. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go weird for Joe. Oh wow. I'm gonna go weird for Joe and for Jeff. I don't get any of the benefit other than free liquor from this place. Uh, actually, I have to pay for the beer, so I- Joe, I hate you. <laughs> and Joe's all, if you wanna drink the others, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, all right, we, we, we mixed it. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, God, that's like, Pineapple chaser? Probably. I got I got pineapple juice. That'll kill it quick. Yeah, I go yeah. Yeah. Dang it. Joe, thank you. Go give me 50 bucks. <laughs> I'm gonna go, go get Patreon, get Joe to be so, on mine. So well chase this with something that will not mix with it, but it should kill the flavor pretty quickly. <laughs> I have tequila because I sometimes make drinks with tequila for other people. Joe! Damn you! Damn you, Joe! Now we Thank have to do it. Tequila. I was gonna try to draw it out, and thanks for watching Talking Heads episode twenty-two point five. This has been Jeff. I'm, uh, this is awesome. Now you have to drink the whiskey too. I know we have to drink the whiskey too. Yes, yes, we'll do that. I'll. It's okay. Uh Joe. To Joe. To Joe. You know, not as bad as I thought. Yeah, the the mint helps a lot. Wow. Actually, the, the yeah, the actual the the, the <laughs> I don't need the pineapple, Joe. Not the best. Joe, I don't need a chaser. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's um. There's a call on that, Jeff. Joe. Joe, I'm telling you, that's a shot. That's a shot. Wow. And we just go on live. I want to see chat blow up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cheers to Joe. Cheers to Joe. Now, now I got pineapple juice. Yeah. Like I said, it? it immediately kills the flavor. Oh, yeah. How much did you say you paid for these? Um, I got a case. The case, yeah. I got two cases of this, so 48 cans. Seven bucks? Oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah, no, yeah. my uh, my mother in law was uh, she uses pineapple juice for some like Asian dishes. Yeah, for, for the sauces. I, 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 the big can. I do it for a lot of rum drinks. Yeah. And my problem is you can only buy the the big ones, the giant. Things. Yeah, and that's what she. But she's like, oh, I only need a couple ounces. And I I, I swear I, I remember you telling me the price. I was like, I, I swear Jeff told me this is actually ended up being like six seven bucks. Yeah, it's about the same price per ounce. Yeah, but the thing is, I only have to open six ounces at a time. Exactly. And so if I'm making a a, a Pineapple juice and rum. It's it's easy to do. Joe no, please. cheers to you guys. Joe, I'm serious. Try tequila and peppermint schnapps. That's an interesting. It's it's not as horrible <laughs> as it sounds, actually. It, I actually enjoyed that. The the I totally the, did. The very front wasn't bad. The middle you is where you taste the tequila. The, and the, it was the, really quick. The, yeah, the, it, it's like it's like a lot of peppermint. Oh god, tequila. Oh, oh wow, a lot of peppermint. peppermint yeah. And, it, and then it's just it's smooth. Yeah, it's it was like, surprisingly smooth. It is a roller coaster. You're like going up this hill. You're like you're afraid to drink it, and you have oh, it, no, 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 and then no. you, ah, oh, you know this is actually really fun. <laughs> yeah, that that surprised me. That's called the Joe. The, we'll, we'll call that shot the Joe. We'll call it the Colvin. Yeah, there we go. The Colvin. Colvin. Shot of Colvin. I like it. And you know that come next show, he's gonna be like fifty bucks shot of Colvin. That's <laughs> Oh god, now it's a thing. Now it's gonna be a thing. Now it's a thing. <laughs> so if you want the recipe, there it is. Dipsy <laughs> 50. About 50 50. I, yes. I think mine was a third to two thirds. So, but it was more tequila than schnapps. Yeah, oh yeah. It so, was it was definitely more tequila than schnapps. But that that was that was interesting. Yeah. 
Yep, uh, yeah, get flats of uh, pineapple juice from a bartender. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, this was Dole pineapple juice. It was $7 for this massive case of 48 cans of this. Yeah. And now I can make it one drink at a time rather than wasting 60 gallons yeah. of pineapple juice because I want yeah. one little drink. Uh, it is a thing now. Yeah, we're dapper. We're not drunk. Uh, you know, yeah. I have a breathalyzer if you want to see, but... Is it one of those cheap ones? It's one of the cheap ones. Uh, those... it, it's an accurate cheap one, though. It, how? I don't it, know. It's a good accurate one. I don't think we should do it live, though. I don't think we should do it live. <laughs> we, we're not checking before you go home, just yeah. make sure. Um, I had a big, big dinner, big lunch. I'm good. Yeah, me too. So, I know, I, as, as far as everything... Actually, I... Joe secretly wants me to get fired. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean... We at least didn't have the other... Well, Joe's financing my next career, so it's other, fine. There you go, yeah, right? <laughs> this is the start. <laughs> oh, Joe, I love you. <laughs> what were we talking about? What was the news of the day? I don't even... AMC? <laughs> <laughs> AMG? Oh, actually, what, you know... Was it Mercedes there, there, news? There was, there was the very last point that we did have. That's right. There's the last point. There's the last the point. The poker game! Yes. The poker, game. the poker game. How could you forget that? I forgot game. about the poker game. Gosh. As soon so, as I saw the title, I knew exactly what you were, what the scene it was, though. Hope you have sweet nightmares. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, so, everyone remembers Stephen Hawking for uh, his pop culture influences, for his brilliant physicist mind. The voice of, you know, Windows and computers. Right, exactly. Uh, for, for his <laughs> voice, for his... Very unique brand of humor. Um, Actually, I I really I think that was the one thing I appreciated him. Show twenty most. bucks get a cab. <laughs> uh, we don't have Uber here, and the cabs are ungodly expensive. Oh god, right. Um, I, I am way out of town. I I am. I, I say I live in Salem. I am twelve miles from Salem. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I have a couch. John can can sleep it off. <laughs> But thank you, Joe. Tell you what, 20 bucks, John, that's yours. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, 20 bucks. Joe, 20 bucks, John, get a cab. All right, I'm getting the cab. There you go. Don't say I never gave you anything. Going to the strip. Anyway, so, <laughs> oh, I got singles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> make it rain once. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drop. That's right. Give me pennies, I'm gonna make a hail. All right, uh, yes, Hawkins. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. So everyone, like I said, everyone remembers him for his pop culture influences. Uh, um, Simpsons cameos, Futurama cameos. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. He's been on a lot of things. The thing I remember him for in the pop culture reference is he was on Star Trek. He was on Star Trek The Next Generation. Yep. And he is the only person to ever play himself in Star Trek, in any Star Trek. That's because true. Because he played Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Okay. A hologram version of Stephen Hawking. So, but yes. So Data has a poker game with the with this, the greatest this. minds of history. So he has a a poker game with Sir Isaac Newton, uh, Albert Einstein, and Stephen Hawking. And uh, I'm not going to play the audio because I don't want to get flagged or copyright violated or anything like that. That's not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> copyright violated. American Picture Association will uh, will violate you, um, but uh, Isaac Newton is kind of disgusted at the whole ordeal. Why are we playing this ridiculous game? And uh, Albert Einstein is this cheeky little bastard who's trying to cheat at basic math. And I believe the bet was seven. No, it was ten. Albert, get it right. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, Stephen Hawking ends up winning the hand. Uh, he drops down a. Uh, uh, it was a four, full four, of a, four of a four kind. kind, four of a kind sevens, uh, and uh, I think the line is the improbability theory will not help you now. <laughs> and, uh, and he drops, <laughs> drops sevens, and the smile at the end is just fantastic. We'll skip ahead a little bit here. Here we go. So will not help you now. <laughs> Wrong again, Albert. And he drops four sevens down from a mechanical arm. Albert Einstein loses, and Hawking gives him a shit-eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I remember from Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, rest in peace. Yep. And I think that's as good a place to, any to end 
Pi Day. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. We do appreciate it here on episode 22.5 of Talking Heads. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. So does that count for two episodes for me? That, I'm going to delete the first one. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. Quick, everyone, watch that part so I get more views. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah. Joe, go quick. Spend money on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, don't. You spent enough tonight. Save it for next week, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, guys. Uh, look me up on Patreon. Um, I have a Patreon if you want to support me in the same way that Joe does. Um, my first, my first uh, feature episode of every month, I charge my Patreon backers. I am working on doing some special features. I'm thinking about doing some exclusive Q&A videos where you can ask me questions and I will post a video response or maybe a video benchmark or some weird thing that you wanna see that I have parts to do. Um, I'm thinking about doing things like that. Uh, you also get access to my Discord server so you can chat with me, with John, if you really want to. Right, who would want to do exactly. that? Um, Steve, Rhett. Steve, Rhett. You can chat, chat with all the guys from Talking Ads. We are always on there pretty much 24 yeah. seven. One of us is online. Oh yeah, pretty, it's, pretty it's much ridiculous. all the time. Um, most of the I'd say 99% of that, you're talking to us while we're working. Right. So it's not a continuous chat, but it's, we are. But I answer questions. We do answer I, questions. And we crack jokes. Yep. Well, most of it is just joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we're just chit-chatting, kind of like talking heads, but chat version. But all day long. But all day long. All day, every day. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's worth, I mean, minimum what, dollar? A dollar. Dollar, minimum. One, it's, one dollar per month gets you access to my Discord. You get exclusive chat to me and everyone else. Yep. So, you know, and if you want to do a little more, that that's great. Yep. Um, but, I mean, um, dollar's totally worth it. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple people who are donating five and ten bucks. I've, per, got, that's I've got awesome. some people who are donating a dollar. Yeah. And, and, and they're all in chat, and, and we all have a good time in there. So, yep. um, it's definitely a lot of fun. So, Look me up on Patreon. Um, new video hopefully coming on Friday. Is it? Friday, possibly Saturday. I'm, I'm working on one. Of... People are, on, are saying stuff. And Joe did pay the 20 bucks. He did pay the 20 bucks. Joe, you matched yourself, and I think that's cheating, but I didn't clarify the rules at the beginning. That's like AMD. <laughs> or no, Intel. All right, let's end on this. End on this. All right. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Did you end it yet? Good night, guys. All right, there we go.